Here is a lens, the same one that we showed you before. You might find lenses in a pair of glasses or in a microscope, but what are lenses made out of? Glass? Sure, but do they have to be? Let's find out. So things look different when you look through a lens. Maybe they look bigger, like in the case of a magnifying glass, or maybe they can make blurry things look clear, like for a pair of glasses. But how do they work? Well, have you ever seen a straw appear to bend in a glass of water? This is called refraction. Light bends or refracts whenever it passes through a different material, like from air to glass. And lenses use this to bend light so objects appear bigger or clearer. So this silica lens is made out of glass, but glass isn't the only material that can bend light. Like we just mentioned, water can also refract light. So if you have a cell phone nearby, try opening it up to a white screen. Um, and then very carefully place a drop of water directly onto the screen. Look closely at the drop of water. What do you see? Can you see little white squares and maybe some colors? Red, green, blue? Your phone screen is made up of a bunch of pixels that each emit a combination of three colors, red, green, and blue. Different combinations of these three colors, red, green, blue, can make up all of the colors your screen can display. How do you think a single pixel might create the color purple? Well, you can turn off the green, but leave the red and the blue on at the same time. By doing this, you can create virtually any color. And white is the result when you leave all three on together. So here's a spreadsheet with little boxes that are red, green, and blue. Let's zoom out a little. And you can see that each color square has a different intensity. If we keep zooming out, our eyes start to blur the colors together. And we see many more colors than just those three. Now you can see that this makes a picture of a building. This is the principle of how your phone screen can make so many different colors. And this little water droplet is actually working like a magnifying lens to show you some of the colors in those little pixels that are making up the white screen. So water can transmit and bend light like glass. So it can be a lens too. We just use glass because it's solid. Well, a drop of water isn't that exciting. So let's make a bigger version. This is something that you can try at home. For this experiment, you'll need a packet of a gelatin dessert like Jell-O. I would recommend the lemon flavor since it's lightly colored, so you'll be able to see through it easily. You will also need a small bowl, a cup of water, a set of round bottomed measuring spoons, a paper towel, and then a tray or a cutting board. Okay, so now we have all of our materials, but first, if you decide to try this at home, please ask a parent or an adult to help. They'll probably have just as much fun doing it as you. So first, you're gonna microwave the water for about a minute and a half, which I've already done. And then we're going to pour some of this gelatin dessert into the small bowl. I'm only gonna use about a quarter of the packet, um, but you can make more if you want. Um, so, like I said, I'm gonna pour about a quarter of this packet into this bowl. Um, and then I'm going to pour about a quarter cup of water over it. If you're doing the full packet, you'll wanna use a full cup of water. And be careful because the water's gonna be pretty hot. Okay. Now I'm going to just mix this for about a minute or two. You want to make sure that all of the little crystals inside have dissolved. That looks pretty good. And then, because this is still pretty hot, we're going to leave it for about 10 minutes so it can cool down a bit. Okay, so it has been about 10 minutes. So we're going to scoop some of the liquid into each of these measuring spoons, placing each one onto this cutting board. Now I've covered the cutting board in a paper towel um, because if you spill these, you're going to make a pretty sticky mess. So we'll repeat this and fill each of these measuring spoons. That's how we have the paper towel. Okay, so this whole tray is going to go in the fridge for about four hours or until this jello sets and is completely cool and firm. All right, now that these are completely cool, we're gonna try to get the jello out of the spoons. So be gentle so you don't rip them. Um, and they can be kind of stubborn. Um, so I would recommend um, getting a bowl of warm water and putting the bottom of the spoon in the warm water for a little bit, just to, just to loosen it up um, and see if we can pull it out now. Okay, here we go. 
So we got out of the spoon, we're gonna put it flat side down on this plastic wrap, and now we have a lens. Okay, so we're gonna repeat that with the rest of the measuring spoons until we have gotten all of them out. Um, be careful if the water is pretty warm, it can get kind of hot. Okay, so now we have five lenses that we just made out of jello. Okay, so now that we have them all out, I can take this piece of plastic wrap to move them around a little bit and look at different things. So I'm gonna start by looking at this box from the jello. I'm looking at the labeling. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna carefully move this so it sits on top. What do you see when you look through them? How are they different from each other? Is one better than the others? Can the small ones still make things look bigger? Do they seem to magnify things more or less? If you have a chance to make these at home, play around with different sizes and shapes. Um, look for other containers in your house that are round because the size and how round they are can affect what you see when you look through them. Some people's whole job is to design lenses. When they're doing that, they have to consider things like the shape and the material of the lenses. Now, there isn't really anything special about glass except that visible light can travel through it, which is why you can see through it, and that it's solid at room temperature, unlike water. So a person who is designing a lens might choose different materials for different applications. For example, if you wanted to design a lens for an infrared camera, you might make the lens out of silicon, like that wafer we showed you in the last video. Remember how you could see my fingers through it, through the infrared camera? Even for systems that use visible light, there is a wide range of glasses that give the systems different properties. So, by carefully choosing lens materials and shapes, optical engineers and lens designers can create systems like microscopes or cameras that can do a lot of amazing things.